field. Okay. Like Christian. Uh, I'm going to school for journalism. Yeah. And so why are you in school for that? Oh, uh, um, that's about it. I'm a journalist. Oh. <laughs> okay, so here's the thing. Here's the thrust of my argument. School is obsolete. Right? Uh, we've been using this old, outdated model for hundreds of years, and it's not really working anymore. And so, a lot of people they spend what, four years undergrad, maybe more, a few years post grad, and they have nothing to show for it for a piece of paper because the job market's kind of brutal out there. Even entry level positions are only experience or something. And oh, wait, I'm certified in this and that, but I don't have experience, so I wasted all this money, I'm in debt, I've wasted four years of my life, I don't know what, what I'm supposed to do, government assistance, I don't know, it's, it's pretty bleak. So that's the unfortunate problem, it costs, one thing, school costs way, way, way too much. The fact that a lot of people in here have worked all the way through school, right? You guys have worked, some of you guys have worked through school, some of you guys have gotten scholarships, and it's just on the cut, you still have to get loans. You're still suffering. And then, what do you have to show for it? So, I'm starting out really dark. What does school actually train you to do? Like, public okay. school, public universities. Okay. What is it? I'm, I'm, I'm talking about in, in terms of what it advertises. Like, say, journalism. <laughs> you can pick on you, Marcel. Journalism. Yeah. What do your classes actually teach you to do related to journalism? Um, I, I'm basically a prerequisite right now, and I'm still trying to get the mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, uh, my mother was a journalist. She opened uh, the first Spanish-speaking newspaper in the San Francisco Bay Area. So I, I sort of know a little bit about that field. I've done journalism classes before, too. There's really no substitute for actually going out and doing it. Like, there's, think about someone who has a degree is going to try, oh, I have a degree in journalism, I'm going to go try to get a job at some sort of newspaper, some sort of news outlet, whatever, and no nice way of saying it, good luck with that. And then we have people who are independent journalists that just sort of start filming, start writing, start interviewing people, so just start getting the story and telling the story. And then before you know it, they're making content and then, you're good, I'm going to hire you. Oh wait, I don't have any papers, who cares? So, school doesn't teach you what it's supposed to. It's, it's kind of an old model because here's what you do. You're a professional in your field, right? And you get like a, you get a teaching position in state journalism. I don't, again, I don't know what it takes to get sort of position, but so you're out of the field and now you're there teaching. Now fields, they evolve at a very rapid rate, right? New knowledge, um, new people in the field, new the market changes, and then people have been teaching, assuming the curriculum is exactly the kind of stuff that these people had to use in the field when they were actually doing it, it's obsolete pretty soon. They're, they're teaching the same old things that work, at best, the same old things that work back in their day and they're not out in the field actually learning what works and applying it. So they're just, and what happens if you can't, what happens if you learn rubbish? in your class. Nonsense. What what accountability is for there for the professor? Oh, sorry, I'm just teaching journalism. I got you I got you my degrees very critically acclaimed this and that. And then where does that get you? Last thing is, well a lot of people do it for the piece of paper. What good is the piece of paper? Some fields require it. Some fields require degrees. The biggest fields that require the piece of paper are <laughs> academia. I wonder why. And self as a feeds on itself. Now, do you actually need the piece of paper for any position, the university piece of paper? I went to an unaccredited university, it's still unaccredited, they're trying, but plus they're so not accredited. I still managed to land a position at the White House. If you can do that, like, at that point, you know what I'm saying? The piece of paper is useless. So, now just knock school three big Hard ways, and I'm sorry to do that. What do you do instead? Now I've done plenty of bitching about, oh, this sucks. You're paying too much. You're not learning anything. Your piece of paper is worthless. And now I've right on your parade. What's, what, what hope is there? Well, 
school's obsolete doesn't mean that learning's obsolete. You never stop learning your whole life, right? You can learn anything you want, anytime you want. Now, let me just say one internet, anyone? The repository of human knowledge. Modern human knowledge is all on the internet. Um, that's one of these things right here. Raise it, raise it if you got it. Raise it to the sky. This is the entirety of human knowledge as we know it, basically, or 98%, something like that. The part that matters. You can get to it from here. Go to Google. It's right there. So, one, you want to know anything, you look it up. Oh, I don't know how to play the ukulele. I want to do classes. And don't go to YouTube. There's some guy playing it. There's some stuff you can imitate. You go look for it, put your fingers here. Oh, there we go. And then you know it. That's, for the most part, you don't know anything about human history. By the way, the history they teach you in the schools is kind of incomplete and one-sided. You know, the victors write the history books, but the, the losers still block up the storm. You know what I'm saying? So, you go there, you can get the whole picture. You just keep keep going, keep looking into things. You also learn to think critically because on the internet, things, just a lot of crap out there. A lot of nonsense, a lot of crazy, wild, wild. anyone can write anything, so it makes you trained to be a much better person at distinguishing bad information. It trains you to be a critical thinker, all right? So you go out there and you start learning to quickly skim through information, find only the best stuff, and only the credible stories. Isn't that kind of journalism? So by going on the internet, by using that to learn, you're already kind of a top-notch researcher and journalist. At least, you know, better than anything else. Oh, let's go to Lexis Nexus and look at all these catalog uh, policy papers and this and that. Or, just, you know, go rogue and you got it. So, everything's on the internet. And the other thing is, there's no substitute for actually going out and doing something. Like, you know the way they say you need experience? I know people who have gotten jobs because they started a blog. I have no work. I'm going to go to a, a barista at Starbucks while I you know, get, my, get my life together. And then they, they start blogging and they get successful at it. And even though the blog never directly pays them, well, some people it does. It's that experience that then they can use to get a job. Like, well, what's your qualifications to be an online editor of publication? What's my experience? Well, have you checked out my blog and checked my years and years of content I have out there? My experience, even though no one hired me, I hired me, and now here's my experience. My resume is actually what I'm doing. And so, just go out there and do it. I mean, name some other field, someone. Shout something out. Birth coach. What was that? Birth coach. Birth coach. Well, I can't really help you there. Name something else. <laughs> <laughs> I, already, I already do it. Historian. 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 Forensic. Yeah. How do you how do you get into that? Well, you just start writing writing stuff, right? Start writing papers. Again, your own self-hosted website or something. Your own blog. Start writing things. Start getting published on the places. Again, I, I write. I've gotten published in a few different publications too. And you just you start from zero, and then you just go from there. And then eventually you get some credibility, and then you can get hired, and then, you know, as they say, the pie is the limit. Oh, wait, they don't say that. So, if all else fails, if you can't just hit Google, do your own thing, what if there's a missing link? Like, what about medicine? Oh, I'm going to just start, like, practicing on dead bodies, and then see what about here, dig them up out of the cemetery. So, no, <laughs> that's not going to fly. You can't really get your real world experience on that. How about apprenticeships? Have we forgotten that those are actually a thing? Like now, because the university system is so ingrained, people are so used to going to school, learning, and then do class after class after class after class, and then they have papers, it's a piece of paper that says, oh, I am certified to start learning how to do my job. And whatever happened in the days of, hey, I don't know anything, I'll help you out for free, I'll be an intern, or whatever, and I'll just start helping you out if you teach me the ropes. And eventually, hey, you can start paying me because I'm fully qualified to do this because I have actually been doing it. Oh, I don't know how to cook. Hey, you go start helping out. Come to you. Tell me how to go wrong. Oh, but it's free labor, so you can't complain. And then eventually, you get to the point where you're cooking on the same level as the chef. And then, hey, there you go. You got you can either keep working for them, or you can go have another job with that reference. And then, you know, the rest is up to you. So, it sounds really simplistic to just 
throw that out there that school sucks, just go on the internet instead. But if you have a plan on what you want to do, how you want to go about it, you can just throw that in, throw that in motion and then whatever field you're trying to do, you can get into. And again, without the huge amount of cost. Imagine if you just, all that, all that capital and all that time that you put in to getting a university degree, what if you saved it? What if you save the time? What if you save the money? What could you do with that? Instead of studying a foreign language, studying again, I'm going to be a Spanish major. Why don't you just save up some rent money, buy a ticket to Mexico, live there a couple years? Then you think you'll learn more Spanish than the four year Spanish major? Probably. So there's, there's a will, there's a way. But here's the thing uh, don't just don't just drop out because, oh, school sucks, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm dropping out because I'm going rogue, man. <laughs> then what happens five years later, I'm still going rogue, I'm barely scraping by, I have no plan, I'm not doing anything. But I'm going rogue, I'm going to drop out, and I'm edgy. No. you got to have a plan. If, you're, if you drop out, you have to have a plan. You have to know what you want out of life. You have to think about what you're, where, how you're going to go about it. You have to line up the tools you have, line up the path, and then line up the resources, and then go for it. Don't just don't drop out without a plan. That's the that's the big message I really want you to take away from this. So remember, school is obsolete. Learning is not. Get your butt in gear. Get your learn on. Thank you. To, to garner knowledge on the internet, and uh, as, a, as a university dropout who had a plan and has become somewhat successful in executing it, um, I guess my question is, how do you dispel, you also noted that there's a lot of uh, dis and or misinformation uh, on the great world wide web. Is, I have some sort of perceived authority, you got to listen to me, what I say is gospel. You read it, you didn't read it for me, it's, it's legit. No, you read everything, and then you figure out for yourself. And that's something that's really been lost in the school system. I know a lot of times, you know, homework and exams and things like that are tailored specifically around your ability to conform to a certain system. And that's just not going to fly. Other question? Yes. What about um, high schoolers and not going to high school or going to high school? Yeah, I said school, right? High school is a form of school. The sooner you drop out, the better, maybe, huh? But what if you can't drop out? If you can't, well... Like, if there's a state limitation, you could get sent to... Or state yeah. parents. Then the yeah. Top individual well, here's, the let me put it this way. One thing, I can't tell you to do something you can't do, because you can't do it. You know, it's a logical possibility. But what I can tell you to do is start your education now. Right? Just because a lot of people do a lot of their best work when they're in school. Their best learning in school, even though it's not through school, it's while they're in school. So what I would suggest is start going rogue right now. Just start whatever you want to do, start doing it now. And then you're never going, there's there's a certain mystique to youth, right? If you're oh like oh if you're right, how do I not offend people? I don't care. I don't, I don't care if I offend anyone. If you're like a washed up 43 year old, whatever, you're just trying to oh I'm trying to start something on my own. People might look a little bit skept skept more skeptically at you, like Oh, that guy must have failed at what he did, so now he's just doing anything, he's bad news. But, you know, people love youth. Youth love youth, right? I'm kind of young, I love young people. Old people like young people. Everyone loves a young, up-and-coming, successful, it's all promise and potential. We all have promise and potential, but that's what you have going for you. And when you are in school, there's a certain age that you're at. And that's just the perfect age to just start going. Also, from personal experience as well, learning is old. The younger you are, the more you want to start learning because it gets harder. Like learning a new language, if you start in your mid late 30s, it's going to be a little bit more difficult than the first one. If you start before your teens, it's easy. You just flew in a month. I don't know. Next question. No, I was just wondering. The Teenage Liberation Handbook is a yes. pretty pretty popular among the younger crowd. It mm -hmm. helps to like how to have a conversation with your parents, how to just relax and just learn the process of unschooling yourself from the system and, you know, doing what you love to do, so, great book. Exactly. All right, any other questions? 
Yeah. All right. I think, well, yes. Can I give the young lady a recommendation as well? Absolutely. If you can, get into a JC. All your credits there transfer in at three times per standard. Oh, what? A junior college, a community college. As long as you're in high school, the Fed, at least in California, they pay for all your classes. I took all my PE classes there and got rid of the whole semester of school. That's one way to get yourself out of the Thank you. Here's my job in work. International bachelor. Oh, that's good for the drug run. All right. Now I've gone through that, just the basic grammar work, some basic questions. So I'm going to tell my story, all right? So I can actually talk about my life and myself, which I love since I'm a narcissist. Just kidding. I was, so I was born in Southern California. I moved at a very young age to the mountains of northern Mexico. And I lived there for about 14 years. And so there were no, there were no schools nearby. I was up in the mountains. It was an hour drive to the nearest village of like 100 people. So I lived in, like, when I grew up, it wasn't until I was seven or eight years old that we even had electricity in the house. I remember oil lamps. Up until I was 16, we were doing wood fires to cook the meals, to heat the bath bar, do everything we were doing. So the real, the, the system was not an option. There just was no way for me to go, go to public school, go to any kind of school like that, live a normal life. And so what do I do for education? So hey, homeschooling, that was the only option. And it turns out the best. So I started doing homeschool. I remember in the beginning, it was around six or seven years old. It was on a curriculum. That lasted like a month at best until I just threw it in my mother's face and said, this is stupid, I'm not learning anything. I'm done. And then she's like, what do you want to learn? And I just started thinking, yeah, I like that, I like that, I like that. And I started directing my own education. And after that, it was just everything snowballed once I started to actually take direct control over what I wanted to learn and not follow a preconceived path. And you know, the more I learned, the more it was, the, easy, the more you get into the learning mode, the less it's, the more people are willing to trust you to actually go out there and learn, not just, oh, he's not in school, he's not doing anything with his life. And so, did that for a while, and in high school, you know, you, I kind of sought the, the paper route, right? You've got to get some kind of a credential. So I, I did high school through Kalara School in Michigan, through like a distance program, sort of tailored to homeschoolers. And I didn't join their program or anything, I just started doing things and submitting it to them for credit. Right? Like I'd watch some old black and white movie about the Civil War or something and submit that to like culture and history crap. And then I'd, you know, I'd read a book on this, you know, and I'd read a Little House on the Prairie and then submit that. And eventually, I remember that an exit exam that was a no right answer exit exam. They just wanted an answer and by your, the way you answered, that was how you, uh, that was how you were, how you, can you think, can you learn on your own? And if your answers reflect that, then you pass. So I got out of high school when I was, I just turned 14, I think. And after that, I was uh, about 14 and a half, I took the SAT test. Because, you know, you're trying to get into university. And I looked around, but settled on a George Ruth University, which is now in Salt Lake City. It used to be in Cedar City, Utah. It was a very small, very excellent school that would really cater to homeschoolers. And I, I did that uh, a year on campus and a year uh, distance doing a distance program. And the other two years were the same sort of submit, you know, go around do cool stuff, submit credit. Uh, so submit things for university credit. And so that worked out pretty well because, you know, I took it until I was about 20 to graduate, but I had a lot of experience. Like for example, um, I wanted to, I needed to take a couple weeks off while I was actually in the program because I needed to go to Romania and go to a, um, a summit on the coming influences of Islamization of Eastern Europe. I'm like, I want to go to this thing, can I? And can I get credit out of it? Sure. So you go do that, and instead of reading some, going to like a poli sci class or some sociology or anything like that, actually going out there, going and meeting real people, talking to real people, actually learning something. And so a lot of my education was based on that. I, it's, I initially I initially wanted to get into actual science for some weird reason, and so I started taking a lot of math courses and like self-teaching through a lot of textbooks and things, which is really awful. I wish I had those weeks in my life back, but I got pretty far, and then I decided I wanted to switch gears, so I went for a degree in statesmanship, which was a lot of history, poli-sci, and diplomacy. And the exit examination for that was a, a three-part. One, you had to do a publishable quality thesis, 
which I did mine on civil disobedience because you know why not. I did. I had to um, deliver a speech again like this. I deliver like a rousing, rehearsed speech, not a conversational sort of thing like this. And then the third thing, I had to do an oral examination where a board of professors would throw questions at me about anything I said I learned in the last four years. Like, oh, I noticed in your thesis you talked about civil disobedience. What's the difference between civil disobedience and mob rule? Go. Or, where are the URL mountains? Or, say something in French. You said you know French. Say something. And so, and I wasn't going to be all smart ass in case you show us that I had to do a sentence. But, so that was the, the way the whole educational model worked. And there are, if you're looking for a piece of paper, there are actual institutions out there that will sort of cater to that and give you the piece of paper for your actual real education. Now, I never had any problems with the accreditation thing. It was an unaccredited university. It's totally an illegitimate piece of paper. But seeing all my experiences, I got into just about any, anywhere I wanted with little effort. Like, I did a public policy route. I interned for Goldwater Institute, the last school of choice, the Cato Institute. I worked at the Leadership Institute. I interned for the White House, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All with a illegitimate piece of paper because when real things matter, the right people notice. I'm not saying that all those people are necessarily the right people, but people do notice, people do notice quality. And so, looking in, that enabled me to write. And I do write for a living a lot of times. So I run the Desert Links, which is a blog, and I got published in a bunch of different publications. And so that was what that was from. Now, at some point along the, along the way, I decided I need to learn graphic design. What do you do? You start doing it. So I downloaded GIMP, which is a freeware. Uh, see the fist bump in the back? I see the fist bump. Yeah, freeware um, graphic design program. And I just started started doing it, just cutting my teeth on that. And so, and then I need to learn WordPress and web stuff. So I just started, you know, again, the rabbit hole of the internet going down there. And I learned how to do that. And so I ended up combining those two and doing a few sites, for example, the Desert Lakes. I did the site and all the graphic design for that. Also, I co host the Rebel Love Show with Rob Mathias here. And so I've done the uh, site for that and all the graphic design and all the logos and everything. And then, somewhere along the line after that, I was, well, I need to learn how to do video. So I started just recording stuff, started looking at some online videos about shot composition, about. Um, Things like that. And so I just started filming stuff. And then I got a video editing program. And I started, uh, I got a job doing uh, video marketing for a law firm. And it's really tricky with a law firm because so they have certain legal restrictions about how they can advertise. And so I did that for a while. I got my teeth my cut on that. And then you know, the time came to start doing a podcast. And so I already had everything ready to for half the technical aspects. And then what Rob and I ended up doing is we just, we want to do a podcast, that's all we know. So we get a place. We get a living room, right? Yeah. We're part of the place. I throw out my computer and my microphone, and he gets one too, and get a little soundboard. And before you know it, like, we just add pieces on, uh, look up stuff on the internet. Again, the mentorship thing, right? We've had some people like Michael Logan Dean spend a lot of time and effort charitably helping us out, get started in that. And now we have a fully functional studio um, in Manchester, New Hampshire. We have four microphones, depending on the day, three or four camera angles that I switched to during the, during the show. And it's one of the best studios in the, in the free state community down there. And it's we sort of sat, just decided we're going to make it happen. And then we use all these again, educational tools I'm talking about, that whole approach, to just go in there and make it happen, and now we make it happen. And hey, if any of you want to do a podcast, we know a little bit, and we're more than happy to share and just save you some of the headaches because you know we got where we're going because of mentorship too. So seek out mentors. That's the thing. Uh, I handle contacts. Is that what you say? Yeah. You know that's the one reason you're in school is not to get an education, not the piece of paper is to meet people who are going to help you out either uh, as business associates later on or seek out mentors because people who've been there before who can help you out who are actually doing that thing in the field. Don't take a class on podcasting 
from some guy who did it in the 70s and then he's just, you know what I'm saying? Some dude who just did it in the 70s and now he's just sitting down, like, right? He wrote his own textbook, which is required reading, so now he's filthy rich off of that. And now he's trying to tell you how to do a podcast. No. What you do is you go make friends with someone who actually runs a podcast. And you say, hey, I need help. This is what's going on. Can you help me out? And if he's not a, not a bad person, he'll probably help you out. And I know I'm not a bad person. I don't know about this guy. I'm not a bad person, and I will help you. I will help you out any way I can. And the other thing, I was interested in music. I never had the means or whatever to pursue that. And then, uh, was it five years ago? I just said, I'm done with that. I want to start learning. So I got. I bought an Egyptian lute, and I started thinking. I just started figuring stuff out. Started listening to a lot of that kind of music. So I read a couple books, which I started, and then, hey, Lord, and then I started picking up another one, another one, another one, until finally I got, what, about, was it six instruments in there? Like, too many. Yeah. Whatever, yeah. like, six too many, is that what you're saying? So, but so, for our podcast, for example, I um, proposed before we recorded the theme music. And that's just another thing that I never took a music lesson in my life. Never. I just picked stuff up figured out what I wanted to do with it, and then start going on it. And you might see me around the campus and run around with my ukulele. And it's the compact one I take around. But yeah, so whatever you want to know, you can just grab a hold of that and start going for it. Remember, internet, everything is there, all right? And mentorship, find someone who's in the field, who knows, obviously knows more than you, successful in the field, who's willing to help you get ahead. And then apprenticeships, anyone? And just go make it happen. Because there's a, the old structure, the old world is very well entrenched. It's hard to get out. Once you're out, that's not enough. They still have all the power. We have to build the voluntary world. And that starts with knowledge. So let's start building. <laughs> Round number two of questions. Slash comments, slash anything but hurling of rotten fruit. Yes? Um, I, I just thought he was funny, and I Sorry. unschooled him. <laughs> um, he has educated himself. He's starting his own business. This generation of teens, 20s, early 30s, is going to be the generation that changes that idea of the that he's doing. Thank you. I'm, I'm tired of hearing people rip on what, uh, this, this last generation. I'm going to call them the Bitcoin generation just because that's what I want to say. Because, oh, kids these days, they're unmotivated. Or this, this is the laziest, most self-centered, all that bullshit that they say. All right? I'm tired of people, and it's not even, it's partially me, but it's mostly people younger than me. And no, I don't buy it. This is the future. This is the, the greatest generation, not the status generation like back in the... What was it the, the 30s? This is actually the greatest generation just waiting to happen. We have all the tools to create the most incredible human society we could ever imagine. I just graduated from Stony Brook University and Congratulations. Nice. $20,000. Um, but wait, what happened? We live like right near there. Awesome. Where? In, uh, you know, we'll discuss that later. <laughs> uh, <laughs> my point is that I graduated with a in sociology. That taught me nothing. Um, except maybe guided me a little bit. My professors were awesome, but I ended up apprenticing with a, an older doula, and they had a small um, company that they were growing, and they needed a, an intern. I ended up doing that, and it was just really great to be able to make something for myself. And now I went from that kid serving drinks at Starbucks and, you know, to do what I want to do, and it was a great process, and I just wanted to say Yeah, that's a great thing. I mean. One day you're a bar, you're a barista, and next thing you're a Shire famous comedian. I mean, it just it can happen overnight. <laughs> other question? Other, yes, sir. Yeah. So, I'm wondering if you, could, if you could talk more about, or if you know about some websites like Coursera that will offer free versus um, by former universities that goes from Harvard to Stanford to one of my key, many, many of those places that are for free. Yeah, let me put it this way. Stay away from the university system, even the shattered remnants thereof. 
Okay, they, like, they can be the worst of the worst, but uh, this people have a very strong, very precise knowledge of their the authorities that you're actually trying to go against. And they have very, not very good ideas, but a lot of books and free information that you just have to sign up. And then there are a lot of websites that you can get up to probably a uh, hundred of different topics for free at the moment. Exactly. And if that's Universities and the remnants thereof are good for academia and things like that, or, you know, a lot of times history and a lot of things like that. And so if you're in those kinds of fields, going and looking, looking up free university courses could be the ticket. Any other way, any other field, try to, like, get around that. Because I noticed, I can, from, I've been through school too, I've been through grad school, through it all, there's almost every university course of any kind. I've never seen one that was just pure knowledge. It was all padded with structure. All padded with history and structure and this and that. And it's not, it, 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 you have to, it's a very like diluted form. Like you want to go straight, if you can, right? You want to go straight to the source, straight to the knowledge. You want to learn about filmmaking. Don't, don't go for a university filmmaking course, even a free online from one of the best. No, just find one thing. Watch and notice people in films, right? Like Robert Rodriguez, the Desperado, most fun time Mexico director, etc. One of my heroes, right? He he freely talks about what he does with his film techniques and stuff, and he's he knows what he's doing. He's a one man film crew. Just look at him. Look at what he said. He says about well, how he reuses shots to like get the stuff done. How he gets props for the set. How he does the soundtrack. And he also composes and performs and records the soundtrack for his movies, right? And listening to people who are actually doing it talk about that, that's the best, in my opinion, the best source of knowledge other than just observing and doing. It's rare you'll actually want to go to university style courses. Yes? Um, okay, have you ever found that while directing your own education, you maybe left out some areas that maybe a university would make sure you had as a part of their structure? Like, um, did the subject matter go in depth enough as you're following your mentor or traveling or whatever, for you to become specialized? Well, let me put it this way. If you view education as a career path, as in, you're just going to learn this thing just for your career, you're going to be a very specialized person and you're going to be good at doing your job, and not much else in life, and you're going to be sad and lonely and all these kinds of very dark things. But, so what you do is you cultivate a culture of learning with yourself, right? You start wanting to learn everything. You watch some TV, but not a lot, because it gets to you. You watch some TV, you read some newspapers, you read some magazines, just read everything, consume everything around you, travel, talk to people, ask questions, and then you become a very well-rounded individual, right? And university, or if you're too lazy for that, right, you can just go straight to like a university gen ed course thing and just write down the topics and then just go look for them on your own. And then just if you want that, if you want that base structure that, oh, I need to know about these whole things, and then, then just go for it. It's all online now, like everything. How much you want everything. So pursue that. Yeah, it's right here. Hi. Um, Hi. Okay. Do you um, have any advice for like how to find things on the internet, like other than just like googling the general terms, like places where you can find that knowledge? And Again, that's a very general question about it has specific answers for specific avenues. Right. So Google is a good place to start for everything. It's a good place to start to looking for these places that then you go to to find other things. Like, again, I mean, it depends on. Um, I know a couple websites, for example, if you're looking for um, tabs or cords or things for certain supplements, I can direct you to some that are thicker and better than Google, especially for like Spanish language sites. Right? That's the thing I know. I wouldn't know, there's no like second level Google that I know of that just says, it just filters through all the bad stuff. That's kind of your job, right? And so if you gain your field, I might be able to help you, or someone might be able to help you, or you might be able to help you just by a little bit of trial and error, and eventually you got it. Or you can just Google 
as sites for law information. And someone's going to have an opinion and going to hopefully find it valid. Sites similar to Reddit, though, if you ask a question, they make the recommendation. So it's like a people-based search engine. Yeah. If you ask a question and they don't know, they'll direct you to where you can find it. Exactly. I'm a fan of Reddit. I don't know how to use it very much, but I'm a fan. That's this talk today, I'm doing one tomorrow at 5 on martial arts and free society because I'm a professional martial arts instructor too. I actually do have papers for that. But, and then, you know, I'm co host and we're having a little show with this guy. I'm on the new panel. Doing a bunch of things. I'm qualified for zero of it. You know what I'm saying? Like, according to official sources, I shouldn't even be up here. I shouldn't be up in front of an audience for anything. But, you know, you just, that's exactly my point. Who wants to imagine themselves up here next year? Think about it. Hey, I, don't, I don't need to show of hands. I don't need. I don't need to call you out and then like next year. Hey, why aren't you up here? No, just think about it. Who who wants to be able to just be an expert by next year in something that you can go talk to an audience for? I mean, look at a camera right there. Like he's acting like he's a, a professional videographer. He's not. But he's making the thing, he's making the change, he's making the difference, and making the content of someone who is. And so. All of you, right? This guy's pretty funny. He's not a comedian, but he's about to be. So, hey, I'm calling you out too. Alright, any other questions? Right there in the back. Any advice for someone who doesn't know what uh, they want to do in life yet? Two. One, start feeding yourself. Because once you start feeding yourself, I don't mean like, as opposed to having like a, you know, mother, father, or girlfriend feed you. I mean, start having a job, feeding yourself like that, you will cultivate skills, right? And that will be always your backup. And then just start doing things. Start experiencing things. Start reading things. Start trying things. Go bungee jumping. Don't go bungee jumping. But go, go hiking. Go outdoors. Go travel to other countries. I see the triumvirate right there of international, of international folk that are doing exactly what I'm saying you should do. Leave your whole country. Yeah. Woo! Represent. Leave your whole country. Go do something crazy like Port Fest. And you're going to learn so much about yourself. Right? You're going to learn so much about yourself, what you like, what you care about. You know, take some martial arts classes. You know, I happen to know a very good instructor. Do some, <laughs> do try, try doing some cooking. Right? Try doing this, try doing that. Go visit this. Go learn about everything. Watch a lot of movies. You like them. You know, I'm mean, serious, go to, the, go, to, go to the theater, and then just don't only do the mainstream stuff, go do some weird indie and foreign films, and, oh, you like that, oh, I want to know how, that, how those are made, and then, you know, start filming stuff, start writing. If you can film and write and do social media, which, by the way, I probably kind of did a little bit of that, thanks to, again, social media. Who doesn't Snapchat, you gosh. So, there we go. I was rhetorical question. I do not want to see a show of hands because I'm depressed as hell. So, start doing things like that. And you cultivate skills by doing that. And you also cultivate knowledge on your own interests. And eventually, hey, fashion designer, I like, what if I just want to make enough money so I can buy the best, the freshest styles and just like go out on the town and think, you know, I'm like, shit. Like, that could be career. You have to cultivate that. I either become a fashion journalist or a designer or whatever. Do what you do stuff until you figure out what you can. It's not going to be like love at first sight. Like, oh, the first time I touched a like, video recorder, my, my heart started beating and I just started getting palpitations. I just knew that that was the one. No, it's not always going to be that way. Sometimes it's just going to be you just find yourself keep doing this one thing. The one thing that you don't feel bad. The one thing that gets you up in the morning. The one job that you are bummed that you have to take from vacation day of, right? And then that's that's going to be because it gets hard at some point. And if it's something you just love doing, that enough to just go through the hard times without like a monetary incentive or something, that's what you want to be making your money doing. The stuff that you don't need to be making money doing. Yes. We've been sold on the idea that public school and make you a well-rounded person and the view of what they give you is so narrow and when you for example my son hated math 
absolutely hated me. Me too. Yeah, I got to top three. And Sorry. once I took him out of school and kind of unschooled him, he found things that he enjoyed about math. Whereas if he had gone all the way through the public school system, he probably would never have found that there were some aspects of it that he enjoyed and pursued that. That what you were saying about you know travel and try everything and do everything, that's what makes you a well-rounded person, interacting with other people and learning what they do, where they live, not what the school is going to teach you. Absolutely, and I would say the one thing that two two essential two pretty good skills that public school actually does teach you. And here's here's where I'm going as my whole central thesis. But there are two things. One socialization, and that's not something that's taught in schools, it's something that's a byproduct of being with a bunch of peers. And although, if you notice, young people aren't very good at, at dealing with people outside their age group, and let's say with old people, every age group is better at just what they grew up with, hurt, right? They're all in the same pen, they all go to the same pen all years, and they're just, that's what they're all about. That's one thing I love about this community here. I'm friends with people, younger, older, people who could be my little brother, little sister, some people would be my parents and grandparents, and it's not just, oh, hey, Sonny, it's like equal. We're all friends on an equal basis, regardless of age, gender, orientation, anything like that. And I think that's awesome, and that's what happens when you're out of the school system, is you're no longer corralled into this pen and forced to only myself, I only identify with people exactly like you. And socialization, you still can't just sit on your computer and learn, and learn the, the, the entirety of human knowledge and never see another person. You have to go out there, you have to talk to people. You have to talk to a lot of different people. And that's why I would always su suggest, again, what do I do if I don't know what I'm gonna do? Do something where you're gonna be around a lot of other people. Go out dancing, right? Learn how to dance. Take a martial art class, do music, do another sport, do something where you're around people. And then, that's the one thing. Anyway, the other thing, and I'm not joking when I say this isn't a good skill. It teaches conformity. <coughs> and we're trying to unlearn conformity, but it is a good skill because we're not in a free world. There's, and rebels have a tough time still. <coughs> and it's important, I think, to have some kind of concept of how, how can you lay low, right? How can you not just be a raging individual in front of the whole world and then you get trouble for it? How do you learn to say the right things at the right time or just not just keep your mouth shut? And I think that's a very important skill that public school does teach. There's, I don't know other ways other than you know getting arrested a bunch of times, I guess. So you can learn that, but it's and hopefully I want to I want a world where my children and grandchildren never have to learn that skill. Um, I mean, I don't suffer from introverted nature, but um, one, no, of the problem, one of the biggest problems I've seen is that some people who have introverted tendencies have a hard time starting <coughs> this route because they have to get out of that comfort zone. And that's a really big fear for a lot of people. What is your advice for those people? Um, put it this way. Life ain't easy. I didn't say it was going to be easy. I just said it was going to be amazing and possible. And so you have to do some things. You have to get out of your comfort zone. Port Fest is probably outside a lot of people's comfort zones, or out of the road that led us here. For some people, this is the only place where we do feel comfortable. But you have to get out of your comfort zone to do anything in life. And hey, no shame. Don't be ashamed. Give yourself permission to suck at whatever, and then you'll be okay. If you Give yourself permission in your own head to go up and, uh, my name is, oh my gosh, and just be completely lame, then that's, you won't be that way forever if you give yourself permission to be that way. And so, also, if you see people who are really not good at anything, don't tear them down, build them up. That's the way you can do your part to help that out. I mean, I don't admit, I've read books on body language, I've read books on how to talk to people because someone that I didn't know. I've read all kinds of things like that about basic human things. How do you not know that? And well, I don't know, it just my brain worked different and I didn't have the same structure of the system, of the school system that taught me how to relate to people exactly like me. 
And so don't be afraid to like take a class on, or you know, to read a book on basic things like social cues. I mean, or approaching people, or not being a creep. I mean, like, don't go, oh my gosh, they'll see that I'm trying to not be a creep, and then they'll know I'm a creep. No, go out there. No, go out there and learn what you need to learn. What's more? Uh, recently, New York Times just put a book review out for um, subway etiquette in New York City because there needed to be a book for that for all the tourists that came in. We're, we're from New York City, so it's like, well, that that book was published. Wasn't there a class on, like, gun etiquette here at Portfest? Yeah. Again, because public schools are totally down with teaching about that stuff, right? But again, this is another thing that slips through the cracks. We have to go rogue and find out how to do it ourselves, and it's not just, hey, wait until someone gets shot. Oops, I guess I shouldn't have done that. There's other ways you can learn besides just straight trial and error, and I think we need to be on top of that.